Welcome to our channel Medicine A to Z. Today we are going to discuss about pleural effusion. What is pleural effusion? Pleural effusion is accumulation of fluid in the pleural space secondary to pathological process. Pleural cavity, space between parietal and visceral pleura, and it contain 5 to 10 milliliter pleural fluid normally. Causes for pleural effusion. Common causes are parapneumonic effusion, tuberculosis, malignancy, congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, hepatic hydrothorax, nephrotic syndrome, trauma, hemothorax. Uncommon causes are pancreatitis, esophageal perforation, collagen vascular conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, intra-abdominal abscess, status post-coronary artery, bypass graft, CABG, surgery, pericardial disease, Meigs syndrome, benign pelvic neoplasm with associated ascites and pleural effusion, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, drug-induced pleural disease, asbestos-related pleural disease, yellow nail syndrome, yellow nails, lymphedema, pleural effusions, uremia, trapped lung fistula, atelectasis, may be due to occult malignancy or pulmonary embolism, hypoalbuminemia, peritoneal dialysis, myxedema, chylothorax, pseudochylothorax, transudative pleural effusion. Transudative effusion is ultrafiltrate of plasma squeeze into the pleural space due to imbalance of hydrostatic and oncotic pressure. Protein content is less than 30 GBIL, which can be seen in congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, hepatic hydrothorax. Atelectasis may be due to occult malignancy or pulmonary embolism hypoalbuminemia, nephrotic syndrome, peritoneal dialysis, exudative effusion. As a result of the inflammatory process, vascular permeability increases, leading to the extravasation of proteins and cells. In this context, the protein content exceeds 30 GL. Parapneumonic malignancy, most commonly lung or breast cancer, lymphoma and leukemia, less commonly ovarian carcinoma, stomach cancer, sarcomas, melanoma, pulmonary embolism, collagen vascular conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, tuberculosis, TB, pancreatitis trauma, morbidity and mortality. The underlying cause is directly linked to morbidity and mortality. Patients with pneumonia and pleural effusions exhibit higher morbidity and mortality rates compared to those with pneumonia alone. The prognosis for individuals developing a malignant pleural effusion is bleak, with a median survival of only four months. Lung cancer is the predominant cancer associated with effusions in males, while breast cancer predominates in females. Clinical features of pleural effusion include dyspnea cough chest pain. Additional extrapulmonary symptoms may vary depending on the underlying cause, such as fever night sweats, weight loss, generalized body swelling, hemoptysis, coughing up blood, purulent sputum, examination, asymmetrical chest wall movements, dull on percussion, reduce vocal fremitus, reduce or absent breath sounds, egophony, known as E to A changes. At the most superior aspect of the pleural effusion, pleural friction rub. To determine the underlying cause, here are some key clinical findings to consider. Look for lymphadenopathy, which may indicate tuberculosis or malignancy. Check for distended neck veins and an S3 gallop, suggestive of congestive cardiac failure. Palpable masses may indicate malignancy. Ascites and cutaneous manifestations are common in cirrhosis. Edema is often associated with nephrotic syndrome. These clinical findings can provide valuable clues to help identify the underlying cause of the patient's condition. Radiological features, CXR. If fluid amount is more than 1,000 millimole towers, we can see shifting of trachea and lung to opposite side. In some cases, tracheal shift can be seen to same side of the pleural effusion, and it indicates the intraluminal lesion or obstruction due to cancers, mucus plug, or a foreign body. Sometimes we can see insisted pleural effusions due to adhesions. Small effusions more than 175 millimole will appear as obliterate costophrenic angle. Use of ultrasound USS and CT imaging is better than X-ray detecting pleural effusion. In most literature, 
CT is considered the gold standard, but ultrasound, USS, is the common and frequently used method, particularly for USS-guided thoracentesis due to its ease of use. Ultrasound will typically reveal anechoic areas, appearing black, in transudative effusions, while exudative effusions will appear echoic. When considering thoracentesis or pleural aspiration, here are some important points to keep in mind. If the effusion is secondary to heart failure, thoracentesis may not always be necessary. Ultrasound-guided aspiration is preferred over blind aspiration as it tends to be more successful. Gross examination of pleural aspirate can provide valuable diagnostic clues. Purulent fluid suggests empima. A putrid odor indicates anaerobic empima. Milky, opalescent fluid suggests chylothorax. Grossly bloody fluid may result from trauma, malignancy, post-pericardiotomy syndrome, or asbestos-related effusion. Black pleural fluid suggests infection with aspergillus niger, or rhizopus oryzae, malignant melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, or ruptured pancreatic pseudocyst. These findings help guide clinical decisions and aid in the diagnosis and management of pleural effusions. Normal pleural fluid composition, clear ultrafiltration of plasma that originates from the parietal pleura, pH of 7.60, 7.64, protein content of less than 2%, 1 tier 2 GDL, fewer than 1,000 white blood cells, WBCs, per cubic millimeter, glucose content similar to that of plasma lactate dehydrogenase, LDH, less than 50% of plasma, differentiation of transudative and exudative effusions, light criteria. The fluid is considered an exudate if any of the following are found. Ratio of pleural fluid to serum protein greater than 0.5. Ratio of pleural fluid to serum LDH greater than 0.6. Pleural fluid LDH greater than two thirds of the upper limits of normal serum value. If any of above not present, it is considered as transudative effusion. Another method, pleural fluid LDH value greater than 0.45 of the upper limit of normal serum values. Pleural fluid cholesterol level greater than 45 mg per deciliter. Pleural fluid protein level greater than 2.9 mg per deciliter. Pleural fluid LDH. Pleural fluid LDH levels greater than 1000 IUL suggest empima, malignant effusion, rheumatoid effusion, pneumocystis, gyroveti, pneumonia, glucose. Low pleural glucose can be seen in malignant effusions, tuberculous pleuritis, esophageal rupture, and lupus pleuritis. pH, pleural fluid. pH levels exhibit a strong correlation with pleural fluid glucose levels. Low pH levels are indicative of various conditions such as malignant effusion, tuberculous pleuritis, esophageal rupture, or lupus pleuritis. Specifically in parapneumonic effusions, a low pleural fluid pH level serves as a more predictive marker for complicated effusions. A pH range of 7.1 to 7.2 signals the urgent need for drainage of the effusion to prevent further complications. Cell count. Lymphocyte values greater than 85% of the total nucleated cells suggest TB, lymphoma, sarcoidosis, chronic rheumatoid pleurisy, yellow nail syndrome, and chylothorax. Pleural lymphocyte values of 50-70% of the nucleated cells suggest malignancy. Neutrophilic predominance seen in parapneumonic effusion and empima, pleural fluid culture and cytology, positive results in approximately 60% of cases. Cytology is specifically performed when malignancy is suspected. TB effusion, pleural fluid, adenosine deaminase, ADA, activity greater than 43 units per milliliter supports tuberculous diagnosis. Pleural ADA values of less than 4350 units per milliliter do not exclude TB diagnosis. Interferon gamma concentrations greater than 140 picograms per milliliter in pleural fluid also support TB diagnosis. Acid fast bacillus stains of pleural fluid are rarely diagnostic for TB. Pleural fluid cultures grow M tuberculosis in less than 65% of cases. The combination of histology and culture of pleural tissue obtained by pleural biopsy increases TB diagnostic yield to 90%. Bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy. Consider if a patient has parenchymal abnormalities, hemoptysis, suspected lung carcinoma, or secondary lung deposits. 
it allowed direct visualization and taking sample for histology and culture. Therapeutic thoracentesis. Larger pleural fluid removal alleviates dyspnea and prevents ongoing inflammation and fibrosis in parapneumonic effusions. Therapeutic thoracentesis with a catheter is preferred over a needle. Close oxygenation monitoring is crucial during and after thoracentesis. Removal of 400-500 nmml of pleural fluid often relieves shortness of breath. Limit to 1,000 tolerance 1,500 mmol per procedure. Large bore chest tubes, 2036F, drain thick pleural fluid and break up loculations in impumas. Small bore tubes, 17 or 14F, with 20 semicmeter water suction and saline flushing every 6 to 8 hours prevent occlusion. Pleurodesis. Recurrent malignant effusions occur in lung, breast, or ovarian cancer patients. Therapy aims to palliate symptoms and minimize discomfort. Life expectancy under three months excludes pleurodesis. Outpatient thoracentesis is used for symptom relief. Treatment options include talc, doxycycline, bleomycin sulfate, blenoxane, zinc sulfate, and quinacrine hydrochloride. Indwelling tunneled pleural catheters. Inserted as an outpatient procedure and can be intermittently drained at home, minimizing the amount of time spent in the hospital for patients with short prognoses. Indwelling tunneled pleural catheters. Inserted as an outpatient procedure and can be intermittently drained at home, minimizing the amount of time spent in the hospital for patients with short prognoses.